So, um, Yevgenia has already taught, told about the importance of uh, data and data discovery. And so, what <coughs> I'm going to present that um, is our solution that enables you to search data, to discover data, to see what is actually stored in various data sources in uh, your uh, web, in your environment. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the live lab environment with uh, some live uh, data and live scenarios. And hopefully it will work perfectly because some uh, connects, and it requires internet connection. And uh, starting with this slide, you see the metric solution and it covers two uh, main areas. The first one is audit. Audit is everything that is related to uh, general security, to perimeter security, to uh, permission assignment. And you see that uh, Active Directory or file shares or um, databases are included into this uh, solution. What audit does, it uh, creates reports, it creates alerts on changes, and enables you to uh, establish internal processes of uh, proper data treatment on, and proper data protection. And data discovery and classification uh, part is responsible for the data itself. It finds uh, sensitive and valuable data. It shows where this data is uh, located and even can perform some actions on, the data, on this data. So let's switch to the lab environment. And here you see the page of the data discovery classification module uh, that shows you where the data sources, where the data can be retrieved. So you can see this uh, data sources of uh, structured data such as databases, for example, um, Microsoft databases, or Oracle, Postgre, or MySQL. Uh, data that are stored on uh, file shares, in folders of files, uh, as well as on uh, SharePoint, and the SharePoint on premises or SharePoint online. We can also uh, look inside uh, different uh, web-based applications. First of all, uh, websites. Websites are critical uh, to be checked because they may contain data just available for everyone. And our solution can be used uh, both to identify uh, personal or available data that are resides on the site of your company. Or you can even establish some uh, rules to identify the data uh, that is stored on uh, third party sites, for example, uh, sites of your competitors. And the first idea uh, that came to me that uh, I would identify some personal data stored by Google. But fortunately, I didn't go to this. And that saved my web environment. So um, we can check what is stored in uh, mailboxes, uh, in exchange mailboxes, exchange uh, online or exchange on premises. We can also work with uh, Salesforce, with different CMI, uh, IS, with uh, Box and Google Drive, as well as uh, with OneDrive business. So quite a lot of different uh, data sources uh, that uh, can uh, that our uh, solution can connect to, and uh, what we do with this uh, when we try to discover and classify data, we go inside the files and uh, we try to extract text information from inside of the files. Um, the information which is extracted, it goes uh, in format of indexes into the database 
and all other processing, for example, uh, classifying, is performed using this uh, external database. So, so we do not touch the original data sources. And that uh, keeps the load on the monitored or uh, scanned environments uh, really low because all the load goes to network server. Network server also can process images. So if an image is, image is mapped, we try to do uh, OCR, we recognize uh, the text that is written on an image, and then we um, convert it into text and process it normally as uh, normal text. We also uh, collect such information as metadata, so external parameters of uh, different files. And in the combination of this information, we can find the data that uh, would potentially be uh, useful or uh, should potentially be protected. Uh, how we distinguish whether the data should be protected or not? Uh, we use so-called uh, taxonomies. Taxonomies are actually the rules of uh, uh, what data should be found out, found, and uh, how it should be found. For example, there is a taxonomy for let's switch to that plan B. I got knowledge it's really readable. But you see here the um, set of rules how to identify a uh, Bulgarian driver license. The first reg regular expression, it contains uh, the number or uh, format of the digital number of this document. And uh, on the right hand side you see a weight of this uh, particular value. Um, in case data discovery and classification solution meets this uh, part of regular expression, it uh, gives 40 points to that uh, document. And then it continues scanning the document and if it finds some other terms or words or keywords, it gives uh, this document, adds to this document the value of this uh, particular term. The rules uh, in which this uh, points go to the uh, document, they can be defined and redefined. They, they, there can be dependencies between, for example, uh, you find two keywords, and that means that the points are doubled or vice versa, there can be negative points, and um, the solution has an option to uh, suggest you keywords that could be used to find uh, specific sets of documents. For example, you would like to find everything that is related to tickets. First of all, you type in for ticket, then you probably uh, Find some, uh, type in something like row number or seat number, and the solution uh, shows you the list of documents that contain the, these keywords. Then you want to identify which source of tickets. There can be transport tickets for airplanes and for cities, for example. Then you create two categories, uh, transport tickets and uh, cinema or seizure tickets. So you add negative values to both categories, um, for example, keywords cinema or CFZ to one category, and uh, airplane, train, or uh, boat to another category. So that's how the mechanism of uh, data search and uh, classification works. And after uh, the classification is done, you can 
adjust uh, the accuracy of the data that was found to exclude false positives because you, uh, the uh, metric solution allows you to perform post processing of the uh, categorized documents. So the first thing to do after, after um, you have identified uh, the data is to check a uh, matrix auditor report that shows you, uh, as I've shown here, uh, the path to the data, the data source, and categories of information that uh, are stored in this uh, data. So, using this report, you can manually establish uh, data processing rules. You can protect this data by moving them to different locations or by uh, changing permissions to access this data. And uh, this is done together with uh, Netflix uh, auditor. The other way uh, is to perform automatic data process. What can be done with uh, in, uh, this automatic part? First of all, you can set up notification. Whenever a uh, data related, for example, to GDPR is found, uh, a responsible person would uh, receive an email saying that uh, such data was found at a, a certain location. The second, you can uh, manage rights to access this data. For example, the, the application can uh, <coughs> restrict access to, to a file that contains personal data, or to move it to a quarantine or safe uh, location that is uh, predefined and uh, that you're dedicated to store uh, this uh, sorts of data. For example, here, I know it's hard to see, but here there is a rule that defines uh, how to process data uh, of uh, different credit cards types. And uh, this example, MasterCards, uh, files that contain MasterCard information, they go to one uh, folder and uh, data that contain uh, information of the other cards, for example, American Express, Visa, they go to other folders. And there can be different permissions to access those folders. The other thing that uh, Netflix uh, Data Discovery can do is to redact data. So it can uh, change the document and eliminate um, sensitive data, for example, uh, redacting the card numbers. So I'm trying to show it. And you can see here there was a Word document containing uh, card numbers and uh, some personal information. It was uh, found by Netflix um, data discovery classification application. Then it was moved to a certain folder, and then the card numbers were replaced by this uh, Word uh, <coughs> center. So this is a reduction function. And another function that is available is tagging. You can uh, tag a document by a metadata, and uh, later on it can be uh, used by a DLB solution. So you see some custom uh, properties appeared in, in a document. And those custom properties can be read by a DLP solution when uh, a user can probably try sending out this document with his corporate email and 
this can help to prevent data leakage. What is the advantage of uh, Netrix uh, data falsification compared to the normal DLD solution? As I told, there is quite a sophisticated mechanism of uh, data discovery. So this, the precision of uh, data discovery is uh, really high. Because if you use just uh, out-of-the-box taxonomies that contain general information about uh, different GDPR-related uh, or uh, other compliance-related regulations and uh, uh, data types, you get approximately 60 or 80% of accuracy. But each organization usually has its uh, own documents or own formats of documents. And when you work with uh, the specific categories, you, you adjust your rules of identification and you can uh, get a rate of uh, precision up to 98% or 99%, which is essential when you're working with uh, big numbers of data, because if you want, for example, uh, classify uh, a data storage which has not been uh, processed or classified for 10 years because uh, any organization has a file share, some abandoned file share that have been storing uh, data forever since the uh, organization foundation. And uh, one day, all this data has to be uh, either protected, either deleted, or uh, identified. And uh, Netrix helps to do it automatically. But before this, you have to be 100% sure that uh, this data is uh, <coughs> classified correctly. So um, what we recommend to do is to just take uh, several hundreds of documents, put it into a, a certain test location, and test out the uh, the classification procedure for this uh, test document. So when you get 100% result, you can uh, scan the whole um, file share, uh, see if there were any false positives, if there were uh, any not uh, accurate documents. Then you perform a rescan, <coughs> and uh, if everything was identified correctly, you can uh, perform some uh, reduction or tagging or moving actions uh, that would uh, touch the initial original document. And now I would like to try again to connect to this lab to show you the actual product. So when I was talking about taxonomies, you see that there are some predefined or and out of the box rules. How this uh, that allow to uh, identify general uh, identify documents according to some general rules. For example, related to uh, GDPR. Here we see uh, some categories of documents that. Uh, are specific for different countries and for example for, for Germany we can see a German uh, national ID and here are the sets of uh, rules that allow us to identify a German national ID. Uh, if we click browse we will get into the page where that will show us uh, what documents have uh, really been identified. And um, we can see the information that was uh, extracted from uh, particular files and from particular documents. So here uh, we see a summary of a document. So when it was added, when it was acquired, when it was tagged, etc. Then we see what uh, text was uh, extracted from the document, what metadata was uh, extracted from this uh, file, 
and we can see whether it was classified and with which score it was classified. We can also use this uh, calculator button to see why it reached the threshold, so why it was classified. And here we can see that there was met a regular expression and the standard expression that meant uh, cut in the midday. And there was uh, some boost because uh, two of these uh, uh, keywords of boost were met simultaneously. We can work with such documents uh, by adding them to positive working sets or negative working sets. And we can also see the original document. So here is a uh, real uh, German national ID. And you see it's a JPEG picture. So it was um, recognized and then it was classified. Now I'd like to demonstrate how this uh, processing and uh, tagging works. So you see I've got uh, several documents that uh, contain credit card information. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay them uh, into a monitored folder and show you a uh, live process of uh, recognition and uh, redaction of those documents. I have to reconnect this VPN. Actually, it takes about several minutes for this five or six documents to be processed. And the first stage is uh, acquiring the document, then uh, it is processed, text is extracted, and then it goes uh, through the predefined workflow, through the rules that uh, you I predefined and hopefully you will see this process. Disadvantage of live demonstration because you depend on uh, the external factors. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, uh, if it doesn't work here, uh, you're welcome to um, send me an email and I can do your personal demonstration uh, online when I'm back to our office. So we can uh, show you both solutions, uh, data discovery, classification, and auditing solution, as well as some uh, information, I can share some information on how to protect uh, against GDPR because uh, people are usually scared of this fines and uh, consequences of being not compliant more than uh, just of data protection. And um, yeah, you are always welcome to contact us whenever you have time and interest in data protection. So let's try.
Thank you. And I'm here at the booth, so I probably will do a better demonstration in person. <laughs> 